Hello, and welcome to One Cool Thing, PC Mag's daily show, where we show you one cool thing, which we are testing out here in the PC Mag Labs. I'm Sasha Segan, this is Tom Brandt, and we got the book. We got the book, right? Yes, this is... This is the book. The book. Is the book for you. Um, I don't know what accent that is. It comes from, like, listening to commercials in, like, the 1980s in New York City involving, like, diner owners or something. But the thing is, though, we apologize if we offend anyone, and we sh we're sure that you will tell us uh, how what that accent actually is. Yeah, I don't know what the accent is with the book. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yes, but tell us that and many other things uh, in the comments, which Sasha will explain in a minute, but this this is the Z-Book, the HP Z-Book okay. X2. Okay, and here's the deal with the book. Uh, it is, and, and oh, by the way, yes, 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 I forgot to do the intro because I was busy like doing a 360. <laughs> Um, if you are live on Facebook watching us, uh, please make some comments, ask some questions. Social Pete here will transmit them to us. If you are on YouTube, please like and subscribe. We have a new One Cool Thing every weekday. Uh, keep coming back, you'll keep seeing cool things. Um, and and so, so the book here is a detachable tablet, and this is... Uh, if you are creative and yet extraordinarily wealthy, well, successful. This, is, if you're this very, is the PC you want, right? Yes, if you have reached the pinnacle of success and you're making a lot of money by designing advertisements, things like that, um, you might find the HP ZBook useful. The reason we say that you have to be successful or well healed is because this is $3,500. Um, it's a lot of money for a Windows tablet. I mean, you know, the the most expensive Apple tablet costs what a thousand? Well, a uh, over a thousand. yeah, but Apple doesn't really make fully powered PC right. tablets. Right, and you can't compare. There is nothing yeah. that compares to this. This is essentially a mobile workstation that they the mobile workstation, which is the most powerful laptop that you can get. They've crammed that into a into the book tablet that with the with the keyboard cover. Um, that means that this thing has a maximum memory limit of 32 gigabytes, mm -hmm. which we've never really seen before in a tablet. Um, so, so wait, does the book have the on? <laughs> the on. Does it have a Xeon? Oh, no. no. Okay, okay. No, <laughs> there is no uh, Xeon processor. You don't, common misconception, you can call, you can make a laptop and call it a workstation without a Xeon processor. Okay. It's just a marketing. Does the book have the ECC memory? No, no EEC memory. Yet. Ah, okay, okay. <laughs> Which are typically things that we look for in a workstation. But the thing that makes this workstation are certain business features like uh, the SD or the uh, secure card slot for logging in from, with your IT department credentials. Um, it has vPro management. These are other things you'll find in a business, business this is, book. This is the slot for the card that you have to pickpocket from the lady in the white coat as you're passing. Yeah as you're passing down the hallway trying to steal the industrial secrets. Yeah. They, and like you get the card and then you put it in the laptop and the laptop works. Yeah. Right. There's no fingerprint reader, but there is that. So, uh, but yeah, basically what their idea behind this is, is let's say you are editing something in Photoshop. You just taken, you're a photographer, you're, you're manipulating an image or something like that. And you want to do it in the field or something away from your computer where you have the keyboard shortcuts that you're used to with Photoshop or any other Creative Suite app. So what they've done is they've added buttons along, there's two sets of identical buttons on the sides of the tablet that can correspond to those keyboard shortcuts. So if you want to make your paintbrush bigger or smaller or uh, apply a filter or something like that, you can program these buttons. and, that, and It's like you a see gaming here. mouse for Photoshop. Yeah, and that's the idea is that um, you don't want to give up that speed and, and, and dexterity that you have with the keyboard shortcuts, so you, you translate that to the buttons. Um, now let's also talk about this matte screen here yes. and how it interacts with the pen and just like the sheer deliciousness of that experience. Yeah, so they put a dream color display on this. It's a marketing, HP's marketing name for their 4K touch screen. Um, it's a matte display, but it's a little bit more glossy than you might expect from a matte display. And that, part of that is due to the fact that th for, to make this a, you know, such a vibrant display, they had to increase the, the glossiness a little bit to make the colors pop, hence the dream color name. But, but yes, the pen. Right. So there's a Wacom pen here, 
And the key is that the display has this like friction coating on it, mm -hmm. so that drawing on the display with the pen gives you a little bit more texture yeah. than it does on your average display. It's akin to paper, but not uh, not not quite, not not quite paper. But that, that's the feel that they're going for. Not only that, this is actually the same Wacom technology that you would get if you had. Well, not same. It's very similar if you actually had this professional Wacom tablet, which is to say that the pen, unlike most other pens, does not have a battery in it. It's powered by the screen mm. itself. So you can actually draw and click even if you're not touching the screen, mm -hmm. and this, the, 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 it sends power to the pen wirelessly. It's and like cool. the Wacom pen that you are familiar with, because frankly, if you're buying this tablet, you're probably familiar with Wacom pens, it has a button, it has an eraser. Yeah, you can erase. Um, uh, why are there four cameras? Yeah, so um, there are actually two cameras. There, well, no, sorry, there's three cameras. Two on the front, and then IR sensors for the Intel RealSense uh, uh, cameras so you can have face recognition logins, things like that. We've seen that on many other computers, but that's, they're, they're just bigger on this one. And then the third camera is located on the back so that you can, <laughs> when you're on vacation, you can uh, <laughs> go like this. No, actually, I mean, in, 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 in real life, what that is for is that, so a big, a big uh, market for this tablet are going to be people like uh, architects and primary contractors. And uh, they are going to be going to uh, job sites or land sites where they are building things. And that's when it is not offensive or weird to use your tablet to take photos of the space or the building and then be able to annotate them in Photoshop. Yeah. Uh, that's when I will not like slap the tablet out of your hand because you're standing in front of the Flatiron building with a freaking tablet. Get a camera! Yeah, or the Grand Canyon. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, <instance>. exactly. <laughs> no, there are, good, there, are, there are good serious business enterprise reasons to take pictures with a tablet. Um, Here, I'll put the, yeah, the uh, yeah. kickstand uh, back. Show the kickstand. Okay, yeah, so the kickstand, well, we should talk about the whole ports on everything like, uh, yeah, like that, yeah. but the, the, the kickstand and everything else about this, I have to say, is really well made. I mean, you're spending $3,500, but you're getting really, really high work uh, craftsmanship. This is um, this metallic finish. It's incredibly thin, but incredibly sturdy, and that actually applies to the entire thing, including the keyboard cover. There are no screws. You cannot mm -hmm. see a single screw on this whole thing. Wow, that's 8th <laughs> Gen Core i7, up to 32 gigs of RAM, up to a terabyte of SSD, right? Yes. Yep. So, uh, no, you can't upgrade it yourself. No, but you can configure it. Um, we have the top of the line mm -hmm. version, but the, it starts, I believe, at around 1,000. Moderately decent portage here. We have. Uh, we have two Thunderbolt USB-Cs, an HDMI out for those key architectural presentations, uh, a uh, USB-A, an SD card slot, and what is probably a docking port? Um, uh, no, that's the power button? Oh, that's the power no, button. No, 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 it's not no. the power button. I'm not sure what that is. What, what the heck I'm is that? I'm not sure what that is. Okay. I'll have to double check Finger on that. Fingerprint sensor? Yeah, that could be a fingerprint sensor, oh, actually. Interesting. Okay, yeah. let's, uh, let's take a question. How is the face recognition? Um, so I actually, I only tried this using uh, the Windows Hello login. There are other way, other applications you can use. It works fine for logging in, unless you, the only re way that it's gonna mess up logging you into Windows is if you've just woken up and your face is slightly sleepy looking, you might have a problem, but other than that, even in low light, it works fine. I've never had much trouble with Windows Hello, frankly. Uh, let's take another question. I think you might have covered this earlier, but how heavy is it? Oh yes. It's not like No, I didn't cover that. So you'd expect a tablet to be able to, you have to hold the tablet, right? Now, th it's over three pounds, just the tablet by itself. When you add the keyboard, it's like 4.9 pounds. Uh, check the review for the, like, the, the ounces, but it's, it is heavy. It's, it's not something that you can, you know, throw down on a table, it's, it's heavy. Yeah, the, the, when you're thinking about the usage of this, and once more, this is more for the creative trades. When you're thinking about the usage of this as a tablet, okay, um, this is not actually going to be your primary use case for this device. Your primary use case for this device is going to be 
it's flat down yeah, on your desk right. and you're using it as a drawing pad. Right, and that's why, you know, if you're comparing it to something like this, this is flat all the time. Mm -hmm. And you can actually put a piece of paper on this like you and draw on it like you would a piece of paper. Um, you can't do that with this, but it, it, it's very similar. But we should talk about actually the Microsoft Surface Book because that is yes. similar to this. It has a detachable keyboard. But what they've done actually with, with, with Microsoft, with, with HP, they've put all of the components into the tablet. So the GPU and stuff is in the tablet, which means you get that external processing power even, mm. even if you are not using it with the keyboard. The downside to that is Microsoft puts a, 10, a GTX 1060 in their Surface, Pro, uh, Surface Book. This is only a Quadro graphics card, so it's not quite as good. That also said though, so I use a Surface Book as my primary computer. Um, once, once you've detached the saucer section, uh, the tablet alone on the Surface Book does not have good battery life. Yeah. It really wants the bottom to have, it really wants the, the warp nacelles so that it can have decent battery life. Whereas here, it looks like all the batteries on the tablet. Well, right? no, there is, so you, this is actually okay. Bluetooth. This does have its own battery, but it, it doesn't add anything to the mm, tablet. It's mm. just to power the keyboard when it's not attached. Five hours, though, of battery life. That's Ooh. not very good for a tablet. And, and, and yeah, it's not, uh, yeah, it's not that far off from the Surface Book's yeah. uh, tablet form, actually. Let's take another question. So to clarify, can you use the keyboard when it's not attached? Uh, yeah, you can. You actually have to pair it, though, like you would any other Bluetooth keyboard. If oh, you detach so it, it will come up and it will say, pairing detected, would you like to pair it? So you don't need to pair it if you're using the pop ports, but you do need to pair yes. it as a separate item. Correct, yeah, yeah, this is, so right now, you're, you're, you're using it a direct connection to the tablet when it's plugged in. There's no wireless connection, but when you detach it, you can actually pair it as a Bluetooth. And the advantage there, once again, so you say, what is the use case there? The, the, one of the big use cases there is if you're doing presentations with that HDMI out, yep. and the HDMI cord from your projector is not quite long enough to get to where you want to be. So you plug the tablet into the projector in the middle of the conference table, and then you manage to have your keyboard over where you are, and you can still manipulate it. Yeah, that just shows you really how versatile this thing is. HP really wants this to like kind of take over and be the maybe you know the, the next wave of, of creative tools. I personally am not a, a photographer or a graphic designer, but I think that this really isn't going to do that because I think it's mainly going to be a supplement. At least if you're on the in the graphic design world, I think it's going to be a supplement to your your actual desktop, which you're already familiar with. Now you already I, know how that works. I do wonder. Uh, what the status is. Uh, for the past couple of years, we've been talking about photographers and graphic designers slowly moving from Mac over to Windows. And I do wonder how, how many people did transition and what the penetration of Windows is in the creative trades right now. Because I know yeah. I well, would love to see Jim Fisher, for instance, uh, uh, our photo expert, uh, use this, or, uh, or uh, Jose Ruiz, our... Uh, our graphic designer. Yeah. Use so this. I've talked to a but couple. But they're both Mac guys. Yeah. I mean, I've talked. So I talked to Jose. I talked to a couple other graphic designers. They their first thought was, this is intriguing, but it doesn't run. It it runs Windows. Right. And so that's uh, a whole other thing that you really can't. I mean, that you can make the most powerful tablet in the world, which they've done, but it it's, runs Windows. So that's a kind of like a you know a barrier over here that you can't address. Right. So how how far is that Windows transition in the creative trades? We don't quite know. Tell us. If Any you more know. questions <laughs> out there? So, and just to sum up again, this is really creatives mostly. Like you wouldn't recommend this necessarily for someone in another field. No, I mean any any time you need the most computing power in the most portable package that you can get, this is a good uh, solution. It's not the best because like we said, it's heavy and expensive, but it is, you know, for, for uh, people on a job site, for anything that you need, lots of power in a portable package, this would work. Except that, if I can, if I can, if I can contradict you briefly, okay, sure. except that if you don't need if you don't need some of the special creative features here, like the matte screen and the special buttons and all of that, um, the Surface Book does cost a thousand dollars less. Yeah, it's it's all it's still expensive, but the Surface Book I think is really the main competitor to this. I know we showed the Wacom tablet; those are the the alternatives in terms of graphic design. But yeah, in general, the Surface Book is 
a yeah, great I mean, possible better alternative. If this is 3,500, if yeah. this is 3,500, a reasonably nicely kid as sur Surface Book is 2,500. Sure, and don't forget that the Surface Pro and the all all the other Surface Pro lookalikes are also reasonable alternatives because those actually have the same form factor, which is this the mm -hmm. keyboard cover. Whereas the Surface Book is more of a laptop, the heavier, yeah, yeah, more more laptopy. So yeah, it, re, read the full review because we actually you know go into detail about the differences not only between the Surface Book and the Surface Pro with this, but also the Wacom things. Mm -hmm. uh, pressure sensitivity is a key thing. There's eight thousand levels of pressure sensitivity on the Wacom tablet that doesn't have this doesn't have that. Um, I, I I have generally found that anything over about a thousand levels of pressure sensitivity is marketing. Well, but. Yeah, but graphic yeah. designers might think otherwise. I don't know. <laughs> Tell us if you think otherwise. Any more questions out there? Okay, so this is this is the HP ZBook. Uh, uh, ZBook X2 costs, uh, they say $2,279 here, but as usual, this is our uh, automated pricing algorithm being wrong. Mm, no, no, that's no? right. So the, yeah, I thought so, you said it was $3,500. Like I said, this you can configure this in a couple different ways. The cheapest version of which costs around $2,000, depending on H HP always change their changes their pricing. Our r thing that you're looking at right here, the one we tested with the 32 gigabytes of memory is $3,500. Okay, okay, so $2,279, two more. Uh, we rated it four stars and excellent, although it is a niche product Indeed. for a very specific user, but that very specific user will fall in love with it. Perhaps that is you. If it isn't, perhaps it's someone you know. Uh, thank you all for watching. Uh, one cool thing, uh, if you are on uh, Facebook, come, come on back at uh, 10 a.m. Eastern on Monday. If you are on YouTube, please like and subscribe, and we will have another cool thing every weekday for you.